Hello grade 12s, welcome to analytical geometry. We're about to um, cover some new formulae that you need to know, but for now just let your thoughts bounce around with me on the page. Right, let's imagine any distance PM on the Cartesian plane. I'm calling point P, X and Y, and I'm calling points M, A and B. If you have to calculate the distance between these two coordinates, you would use the distance formula, right? Where we would find PM, make PM equal to the square root of the difference between our x values, x minus a, squared, added to the difference between our y values, y minus b, squared, and then square rooted to get PM, right? What if we wanted to keep it simpler by avoiding the usage of that massive square root sign? We could square both sides and have the exact same distance, but now it has been squared. So PM squared is equal to a mi x minus a squared plus y minus b squared. Now I want you to imagine the same distance coming from the point M. So that new line that's just popped up on the screen is the exact same distance as the original line PM. And so is that line. In fact, I can replicate the distance PM starting from M as many times as I like, an infinite amount of times. And they could all have their own respective coordinates, X and Y values, um, keeping the distance the same between them. I'm sure you'd agree that if we were to replicate that distance PM an infinite amount of times and connect all those infinite amounts of dots together, you would end up with a circle, right? So the distance formula actually is the source of the formula for um, the equation of a circle, where PM is in fact the circle's radius, with M being the center of the circle. So instead of writing PM squared, I can now replace it with R for radius squared. And here we have the equation of a circle. Radius squared is equal to X minus A squared plus Y minus B squared where A and B represents the center of the circle and where R represents the radius of the circle. It's as easy as that. What if we repeat the exact same concept, but now the center of the circle is the origin? Well, if we were to replace a and B from our previous slide with 0 and 0, you would see that we'd end up, oh, let's have a look as if we rotated the exact same distance. You would also formulate a circle and we would end up with the radius squared is just x squared plus y squared. So that right there is the equation of a circle whose center is the origin. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So if we just summarize the previous two slides, you'd see that the equation of a circle with the point AB at the center would be x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared, while the equation of a circle with the origin at the center is merely replacing the a and b with 0 and 0, which will make it x squared plus y squared equals r squared. I hope you're ready for some examples. So we need to determine the equation of a circle with its center at the origin and a radius of four units. Now, the big clue is the fact that the question tells us that the center is at the origin. So we write down the formula for a circle whose center is at the origin. Now, in like any other function, our 
formula for each function is usually in terms of x and y. In other words, y is usually the subject of the formula, and x is on the right-hand side of the equal sign, and any other variable is replaced with a value. So the same goes for a circle, even though a circle is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. Meaning, the, for every one x value, there's more than one y value, and so a circle is not a function. But the same concept applies, whereby we are going to keep x in our equation, we're going to keep y in our equation, but we must replace r. And this question is easy peasy. It has told us that r is 4. So we replace our r with 4, and our final answer is obtained straight away. x squared plus y squared equals 16. Remember that you have to square your radius in your final answer. Right, now we need to determine the equation of a circle with its center at the origin and passing through the points negative 3 and 2. This one might be a little um, easier to understand if we perhaps make a sketch. So you can draw a circle with its center going through the origin. And then let's pop a point minus 3 and 2. It looks like it would be more or less over there on the circle. Now, since the center is at the origin, we can write down the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But the, the length of the radius hasn't been given to us. So you can either make a sketch and um, sketch a triangle and think about the theorem of Pythagoras to get the length of the radius. That's perfectly okay. That's where this formula comes from at the end of the day. It's the theorem of Pythagoras. Um, or you can just use the x and y coordinate that was given to us in the point, negative 3 and 2. Substitute that in and do not solve for r. Keep r as r squared. Negative 3 squared is 9 plus four, 2 squared is 4. So that gives us 13 represents r squared. Because our formula has r squared in it, we don't need to square root both sides. So our final answer here would be x squared plus y squared equals 13. Here we are asked to determine the equation of a circle with its center at 1 and negative 2 and passing through the point 2 and negative 6. I do advise sketching this situation. However, this information is enough to find the equation of a circle without needing a sketch. So let's have a look. We know that the center is at the point 1 and negative 2. And so I've written down the equation of a circle whose center is not the origin, but rather whose center is A and B. And now we can replace our A and B values with the center that was given to us. So we now have x minus 1 squared plus y plus 2 squared because the negative B was replaced with negative negative 2, that's where we get the positive 2 from, equals r squared. We are so close to the event, to the final answer, except we need to find the value of r. Because we want x and y in our final answer, we even like that format. We don't need to simplify and foil out brackets. You can keep it as a bracket squared added to another bracket squared. However, we do need to perhaps replace the x and y value for now because we've been given a coordinate that can perhaps be used to help us find r squared. So if I replace x with 2 and y with negative 6 and simplify the left-hand side, you'll see that 17 is the value of r squared. No need to square root unless the question actually asked, what is the distance of the radius? Then we could say the radius is the square root of 17 units. However, they're just asking for the equation of the circle. So 17 equals r squared is perfectly fine. Now we have a and b, the center values, and we have r squared, the radius value. So we can write our final answer in that format where the circle represents, um, well, where the equation represents a circle whose center is 1 and negative 2 and whose radius squared is 17. 
Okay, easy concept. Please let me know if I've perhaps made a mistake or if you aren't understanding anything, reach out to me and I'll gladly go over it again. But otherwise, see the to-do list to do your homework and enjoy.